Welcome to Tri Church Worship. Thank you for joining us in worship today. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, the first Sunday of the new church year, and the first Sunday of our year long dive into the Gospel of Luke. As we begin, let us breathe deep. And remember, we're in the presence of God who loves, forgives, and makes all things new. When we wait for Christ to come, God is with us. When we wait in the deep of night, God is with us. When we wait as dawn draws near, God is with us. Today, as we wait, we light the first candle to remind us that we have love. Jesus came that we and all may have love. We praise God today for God's abounding love through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, from whom we long, we praise you for walking with us while we wait. We praise you for keeping your promises. Stir up our hearts to join the song that all creation sings in praise of how you bring love to the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. Hallelujah forevermore. He came to bring love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you always. Enjoy it and share it. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, turn us from sin to live for you alone. Make us anew through Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. Here ends the reading. Here in the opening verses of the Gospel of Luke, we hear the purpose in writing Luke. As it says in verse 4, Luke is written that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. Or as the New International Version of the Bible communicates, Luke is written that you may know the exact truth of the things you have been taught. Verses 1 and 3 unpack the author's process, the author's desire to compile or set down an orderly account. 
an account that was handed down by witnesses and servants of the word, an account that was carefully investigated and written out in order. According to verse 3, the gospel was written for Theophilus, who was most likely a patron, a supporter of the gospel being written out, and whose name means lover of God or friend of God. Luke is a gospel that is for all of humanity. Luke is the longest gospel by words. The author of Luke also wrote Acts and is responsible for 27% of the words in the New Testament. As the commentary from the God's Justice Bible communicates, Luke's gospel is universal in its outlook, in that no one based on one's ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic status, or even geographical location stands outside the scope of God's justice through Jesus. Jesus freely and without inhibition associates with different categories of social outcasts, such as Samaritans and Gentiles, tax collectors and sinners, women and the poor, not only the material poor, but also the sick and dispossessed were unable to help themselves or return favors and also the demon possessed. The Gospel of Luke fully includes women. In fact, the Gospel of Luke mentions 13 women not mentioned elsewhere in the Gospels. In Luke 4:18, Jesus announces the ultimate purpose of his mission to proclaim good news to the poor, to release the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. Therefore, the title of Savior most aptly describes Jesus' identity and his mission of deliverance. This title is given to Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 11. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. The term Savior and salvation and saving occur at least seven times in the Gospel of Luke, but nowhere in Mark and Matthew. Luke 19 provides a one-verse summary of the entire Gospel of Luke in this. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save what was lost. Throughout Luke, we see Jesus live out his mission. Good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. And the truth that Jesus came to seek out and save the lost. As the founders of the Bible Project, Dr. Tim Mackey and John Collins communicate throughout Luke, we also see that when God's mercy shows up, nobodies get exalted to a place of honor. Luke reveals again and again the upside downness of God's kingdom. Truly, God's love, grace, justice, and presence is for everyone. It's going to be an exciting ride through Luke, throughout our year long journey. Pastor Michaela. Pastor Jacob and I pray that God's word would come alive for you through the gospel of Luke, that God would grant us desire to dwell in God's word and to receive an even deeper understanding of who Jesus is, to experience Jesus who is the savior. For indeed, Jesus came to proclaim good news to set free and to save. Luke is a living story of 
faith. It takes the bare bones of Mark's gospel and adds the heart and guts to bring it all to life. And then, then it invites the reader and the listener to enter into part of all that is taking place. The Gospel of Luke has been foundational in my faith formation, and I'm excited that we get to explore it together this year. Um, there are many reasons, but I think that there are some special things that happen in the Gospel of Luke, such as the Good Samaritan story, which is one of my favorites. I also love the Gospel of Luke because in Luke, the characters say some sort of prophetic things of what God has done and will do, and the way that it is um, written out looks like it's in a song. So we have characters in the Bible that are singing about God, and I have um, learned those songs through the different musical settings we have, and it's helped me get through some tough times and just gets me through the day. So we have what we call the gospel canticles in Luke. In um, Luke chapter 1, Zechariah sings about how the um, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. And it um, when you sing it, you typically sing it in morning prayer and it teaches us to hope for all that God will do and will be in uh, evening time, we often sing about Mary's prayer that she sings about how God will lift up the lowly and uh, take down the mighty. It's all about that uh, God will take care of the downtrodden of this world. And I uh, love the different versions that we have. During our tri-church worship, we'll be singing that um, and looking into these songs together. The last gospel canticle is uh, the Song of Simeon, and that's in Luke chapter 2, when Simeon meets Jesus in the, in the temple and he sings, My eyes have seen your salvation, Lord, let your servant go in peace. So that one is really important to me at nighttime and uh, thinking about letting uh, us rest in the peace of the Lord, whether that's at night or um, for eternity, uh, when we all have peace at the last. So the Gospel of Luke is important to me because it's taught me about the character of God and helps me connect with God's faithful people um, from uh, our ancestors to what will happen next. I'm excited to read the Gospel of Luke with you more this year. The Holy Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25. Glory to you, O Lord. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once when Zechariah was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, Zechariah was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to Zechariah an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw the angel of the Lord, he was terrified 
and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to Zechariah, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. For John will be great in the sight of the Lord. John must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. John will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, John will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know that this is so? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When Zechariah did come out, he could not speak to them. And they realized that Zechariah had seen a vision in the sanctuary. Zechariah kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service ended, Zechariah went home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me. When he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. The gospel of the Lord praise to you, O Christ. Zechariah and Elizabeth are righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. They are following God. Zechariah is doing his duty as a temple priest in the division of Abijah. Zechariah heads to the people for it's their rotation of priests turn to serve. And Zechariah is chosen to burn the incense in the temple, in the sacred place, in the sacred space. People were assembled and praying outside while Zechariah served inside. And the angel comes, Gabriel appears to Zechariah, and he is terrified and overwhelmed with fear. One translation I read noted that Zechariah was gripped with fear. Notice what the angel says to Zechariah. Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. The, the angel goes on to tell Zechariah that he's going to be a dad and that his son will be a joy and delight and many will rejoice over his son's birth. Zechariah's son will be great in the sight of the Lord and will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. In fact, Zechariah's son will be so great that he will go before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to prepare the way of the Lord. Can you imagine what it was like for Zechariah to hear these things? Zechariah has prayed for a child. He's prayed for decades upon decades only to be fatherless. He continues to serve in the temple with the priests. He continues to pray and his prayers are unanswered. 
Then behold, he is serving. He encounters the angel Gabriel and becomes aware that God has not forgotten him. God has heard his prayer and will bless him and Elizabeth with a son, a son that will usher people unto the Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine what it was like to try to take all of that in? <laughs> no wonder Zechariah was so honest with the angel. No wonder he was befuddled and said, how can I be sure of this? We're old. <laughs> In my imagination, Gabriel replies to Zachariah's question with great chutzpah. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news and so on and so forth. Can you imagine, can you imagine what it was like for Zechariah to hear Gabriel's response and learn that he was gonna become mute, unable to speak as a consequence of his question? Can you imagine having your voice silenced in such a way? Now, while this is going on, people are outside worshiping and praying waiting and wondering what in the world is going on, why Zachariah is staying so long in the temple. And then astonishingly, when Zachariah comes out, Zachariah cannot speak just as Gabriel said he would not be able to. In time, the people realized that Zachariah had seen a vision in the temple for Zechariah was using his whole body to articulate that which he could not speak of. Zechariah stayed on and he finished out his service for that allotted time. And then he went home and indeed Elizabeth became pregnant and she rejoiced that the Lord had done this, that the Lord had shown favor, that God had remembered her and Zechariah. In preparing for our series on Luke for this year, I've been diving into a book called The Story Luke Tells, Luke's Unique Witness to the Gospel by Pastor Justo L. Gonzalez. And he really brings home the reality of how barrenness and God's provision are an ongoing story throughout the Old Testament, revealing God at work in spaces where people had no hope. Consider how throughout the account of God's people, God brings life in spaces where people had little or no hope of a birth, and the story of God unfolds. First Sarah, who through the promise of God conceives a son with Abraham, giving birth to Isaac, even in her old age. To Isaac, who prays for his wife Rebecca in Genesis 25, 21, for she is childless. And she conceives giving birth to Esau and Jacob. Later, Jacob marries Leah and then her sister Rachel. And we're told in Genesis 29, 31, that Rachel, is barren. God acts and Rachel has two kids, Joseph and Benjamin. Barrenness also appears in Judges 13. For there was a certain man of Zorah of the tribe of Danites whose name was Manoah. His wife was bearing ha barren, having borne no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, although you are barren, Having borne no children, you shall conceive and bear a son. And bear a son, she does. And that child is Samson. Then there's Hannah, who pours out her heart to the Lord again and again. And then she and Elkanah have Samuel, whose very name means, I asked God for him. Again and again in the history of Israel, we find the theme of barren women who are unable to conceive and have babies who become bearers of life. 
Those children become central figures in God's story. So perhaps in starting with the barrenness of Zechariah and Elizabeth, Luke is making it clear that God is up to something big in the birth of John the Baptist, who prepares the way for Jesus, the Savior. God is up to something big. As God revealed God's self in the past, so too was God acting and awakening people to God's presence and ability. The Gospel of Luke is sounding a trumpet of sorts, saying, pay attention, receive and hear the account of the story, of God's story, as revealed through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. I wonder if as we begin this season of Advent, you find yourself feeling a bit like Zechariah and Elizabeth might have felt before God answered their prayer. Perhaps you too have prayed and prayed and found no answer, or at least an answer you didn't pray for. Still too, God is with you and loves you and never, ever leaves you. Rest assured, God's love is for you. God's grace is for you. God's presence is with you, even when it doesn't feel like it. God hears your prayers and welcomes you to stay in communication, to continue to pray, continue to seek, continue to be open to the revelation of God through Jesus Christ, fueled by the Holy Spirit. As God met Zechariah and Elizabeth in reality, so too may God meet you in reality. Let us pray. Oh God, help us meet us in reality as Gabriel met Zechariah and Elizabeth in reality. We entrust our lives to you, our hopes, our sorrows, our dreams. Oh God, draw us ever closer to you and shape and reshape our lives with your love. Grant us desire to read your word, to talk with you daily, to serve with all that we are. We need you so much. Thank you for your saving grace. Amen. Trusting in the Holy Spirit, who calls, gathers, enlightens, and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth, 
and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in the people and in all of creation. God of new beginnings, your will be done. God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city parks, the wide and the, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. God of new beginnings, your will be done. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities here in the Sauk Valley, in these United States and in our world. God of new beginnings, your will be done. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life transitions of every kind. God of new beginnings, your will be done. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive storms. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters, for the work of Lutheran disaster response, Lutheran world relief, and Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. God of new beginnings, your will be done. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. God of new beginnings, your will be done. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those on our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Enjoy it and share it. How we live, move, and act and serve in this world reflect how we believe deeply in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gifts of your time, energy, and service throughout this week. And thank you for the ability to continue to strengthen this ministry that we share, which brings the word of God into your homes. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
in the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, this is the body of Christ given in love for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ spur you on to share God's love with all of humanity, God's children everywhere. Amen. Let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all through Christ Jesus, our host and guest. Amen. The God of hope fills us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, for whom we wait. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray, and at midnight comes a cry Our hope and expectation O oh, Jesus now appear Arise, O oh, sun so longed for O'er oh, this benighted spear With hearts and hands uplifted We pray 
lead, O Lord, to see the day of earth's redemption that sets your people free. Go forth as people loved by God. Go forth forgiven and being made new. Go forth and live out love and grace. With God's help, we will. Tula, tula, ula, le, le.